wish yeah. I had a buzzer, you know, just to make myself feel like it was, you know, more like a quiz show. I could buzz something. If you if you do that, I'll add a buzzing sound effect. Really? Post. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, I'm happy to do that. Okay. You feel good? You ready, Matthew? Um. Yeah, I guess I have to be. Yeah, you have to be ready. Because <laughs> we're starting. Right. I think you're going to win, Matthew. I don't know. I... I write a lot of stories. I can't keep them all straight in my head. We find that a lot where the, the, the fan has read the book more recently than the author has, which I think is quite flattering. It's amazing. Uh, yeah. That may be ha about to happen. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Author Fan Face Off. You know the idea, we got one great author, one great reader, we get them together, talk about one book by that author and well, we find out who knows more. I'm Steve Shankin, and I host the show with the leaping librarian, Stacey Ratner. Yay! Hello. Yay! And today we have one of my favorite authors on the show, Kenneth Opal, coming to us live from Toronto. Hello. Hello. And we have a lot of choices. I mean, when you're talking about Ken, you have a lot of a lot of great books to choose from. Um, we picked Inkling, mm -hmm. which is which is a good choice, if I say so. Astonishing, says the New York Times. I like this quote about it, a, a brilliantly funny story about how a little ink splot changes a family forever. I think that's, uh, you know, we don't want to go into long book summaries here because we don't want to, any spoilers. Right. But uh, this is, this. I mean, this book is based on just a, an outrageously creative idea. You disagree? Oh, I didn't. Are you waiting for my reaction? I'm yeah, sorry. What do you think? I mean, <laughs> I'm looking at your eye line. It looks like you're looking, you know, at my. I know it's so awkward. Do I look at the camera? I'm looking at. To me, I feel like I'm looking at you, but. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, I lo I loved writing this one because it was just, uh, you know, it started with a visual image of ink, uh, ink jumping off a writer's notebook, and I think for anyone who's creative, you know, an artist or a. Any, any any kind of creative industry, the idea of, of your ideas deserting you <laughs> or just like leaving your notebook, leaving you bereft of ideas is actually pretty pretty terrifying, but also kind of exciting because you, you you don't know what it's gonna do. You, you imagine what, what the, what's all this little uh, creativity, this blotch of creativity gonna do without me? Um, that was sort of the starting point. That's awesome. All right, well, you have a big fan here. I'm gonna let Stacy do the introductions for your challenger. Yes, and um, I'm super intimidated by our challenger today. He is Matthew, for, also from Toronto. Um, he is in seventh grade. He's been on the Ontario Library Association Kids Committee two times, selecting books for the whole country. Wow! And, uh, I mean, I'm amazed. So um, I feel like, um, and then he also plays bass, run, uh, you know, competes in triathlons. I don't know when he, you know, has time to do all these things, but um, pretty amazing kid. So I'm really excited to have you with us today, Matthew. Um, so we're going to just jump right in. You guys ready? Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, Matthew, this animal is the first to see Inkling come to life. Rickman the cat. There we go. Perfect. And Kenneth, Inkling first emerges from the pages of this. Artist's sketchbook. Yeah, we know you knew that, that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're gonna get harder though don't worry yeah i'd be worried there i i thought yeah what I you you uh they'll get harder okay. all right matthew mr rylance is best known character is this mutant superhero oh kren kren that's right yeah i mean i love it makes you want to read kren doesn't it see what he's all about <laughs> all right i'm going to continue on that comics theme as a school project, Ethan and his friends are making a comic starring this type of animal. Oh, is this mine? Oh yeah, sorry, Kenneth, yes. Okay. Yeah. Gorilla. Gorilla, correct. Yeah. Very good. All right, Matthew. When Inkling takes the shape of a puppy, Sarah gives it this name. Lucy. Yeah. Well done. I love Sarah. Well done. Yes. 
And then I was so excited that I got this question. Kenneth, the cake Mr. Rylance serves at Sarah's party is actually made of this. It's bread. It's a loaf of bread. Now, is this because Steve and I were talking before because I like I laughed out loud during that scene. And but it's sad. It's so sad, too. Like, and where did you come up with the idea for that? Well, luckily, I never did this. I never had to do this. But um, I could totally see, you know, a frazzled uh, single parent, you know, having to do this in a pinch. And uh, I actually thought it was reasonably creative. Um, and I thought it was very funny. So primarily, I, I love that scene. I think that's that might be my my favorite scene in the book. Just the process and sort of binding the loaf together with an elastic band and covering it with some age old icing, um, trying to pass it off on these kids who are just not having it. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then even you. I, you know, even the kids, the kids when they get picked up, they're like, "It was bread." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. All right, and this is another one of my favorite details: how, how when Inkling um, takes on the ink from books, he he also takes on knowledge and even the personality from those books. So, let's see if you remember those details. After reading this book, Inkling says, "This is for Matthew." He says. I is having a frothsome adventure. Uh, it's the BFG. Right, he's just read the BFG. Wow. Such a great book. <laughs> so great. And Kenneth, after reading this book, Inkling says, I'm utterly enraptured by this glorious story. I think that was um, uh, Anne Green Gables, Alan yeah. Montgomery. Totally, a big change of pace from the BFG. <laughs> yeah. <Is> that, <laughs> no. And uh, my wife is is uh, obsessed with Anna Green Gables. When we went to Canada a couple of years ago, we we made a pilgrimage to PEI to see some of the landscape. Is that um, were you a fan as a kid? Uh, I was, although um, I didn't read the Anne books till a little later. I read the, a different series called Emily of New Moon, um, and I liked Emily because she was uh, an aspiring writer. Um, so I was really excited when I was about twelve to read about her. You know. <laughs> attempts to be published and sending her little uh, stories and poems to newspapers and journals and getting rejections. But sometimes, sometimes a glorious acceptance and a little bit of money in the <laughs> envelope. I thought that was like, that was it. I was in, all in on being a writer after that. Awesome. Uh, okay. Only two more questions. Uh, Matthew, Inkling loves these kind of books, but Ethan says they are not good for him. Comics. Yes. Yeah. And I have to say, Sidney Smith, I love his illustrations and just did, I mean, even the dots of ink throughout all the pages. Great. Yeah. Oh, I love and then it. finally, Blotter feeds on a steady diet of this best selling comic series. This is mine, right? Yep. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's called Exterminatrix. Whoa. Yeah. You got it. Oh my gosh. You got 10, it. 10. <laughs> so anyone can answer. Ethan has a hamster. He had one when he was 10. What was its name? I see a hand up, Matthew. Yes. Uh, squeaker. Squeaker. Yeah! That's it. Congratulations. Yeah. Wow. How does it feel beating? Now yeah, beating one of your famous favorite authors in, in uh, his own book. Terrible. <laughs> That's pretty good, right? <laughs> <laughs> well done, Matthew. <laughs> Matthew, do you have um, do you have any questions or anything you'd like to to ask Kenneth while you had the chance? Yeah, um, I was wondering uh, where did you get the idea of like um, you know inkling. Well, it was, I actually have a note in my ideas notebook um, where I talk about the image of the ink pulling itself off the page. And I just thought it was a very arresting image, this big black, you know, splotch, like a sea anemone or something trying to like, you know, wrench itself off the page. And then the book trying to suck it back in and it makes a break for it. Um, that really was the starting point. So then I just asked myself all the questions about, you know, whose sketchbook is it? Who lives in the house? Uh, what does the ink know? What does it want? Um, that's how I, all my stories really start. It's like this huge um, constellation of questions that I just 
go through and, and see where they take me. Yeah, thanks so much. Well, you are you are a worthy contestant, Matthew. <laughs> worthy victor. Man, <laughs> Oh.